What am I in? Hey, everybody, come on in. I'm looking for an old show that I want to watch again. And when I say old, it's old. It was called Boston Legal, Boston Practice. It was with Will Shatner and... That other guy, the guy that played in the blacklist, I think it was called Boston Legal. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Do you guys watch um, Love and Marriage Huntsville? It's a reality TV show on the OWN Network. Love and Marriage Huntsville. Do you guys watch that with Martell and Melody and Marceau and Maurice and Kimmy and Letitia and that new couple, Tiffany and Lewis? I don't care for them. And then you got um, Destiny and you got Stormy. I love that reality TV show. <laughs> I love that show. It is so, it is straight up messy. Straight up messy. And I love it. So I recap and review the show. I do that on my YouTube channel. And so the new episode, episode three dropped last night. And so you just watch the blogger reviews. Well, you can watch mine. It's up over on my YouTube channel. I have to do it on YouTube because I be having a lot to say about the foolishness that goes on. <laughs> about the foolishness that goes on during these reality TV shows. There's no way I could, I could get all of my thoughts out in three minutes or less. There's no way I could get all of my thoughts out in 10 minutes or less. So I have to do my recap and reviews on the on the shows that I go into deep detailed discussions about over on YouTube. You didn't think Mel did anything wrong? I think the opposite. And if you watched my um, recap and review on, on, um, on YouTube, a lot of people feel the same way as you. Um, a lot of people were on Mel's side. I, I am not. I am not. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that she's wrong. I'm not saying I truly understand, you know, why she did what she did. I'm just looking at the kids. And um, I think Mel is looking beyond the kids. I think Mel is still, I think um, for me, the source of what Mel did was, good morning, everybody. The source of what Mel did was to teach Martell a lesson. He can't keep doing this type of thing, right? You know, he has his weekends and when, you know, he wants to do these types of events, he should do it on his weekend. I completely get it. I completely understand where Mel is coming from. But when I look at this particular situation, it was a book signing for the kids. And I am 100% sure that Martell scheduled, purposely scheduled it on a weekend when Mel had the kids. I, 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 that does not fly over my head at all. But when I look at the event itself, you know, it's a book signing and the kids names are on the book. They are the authors of the book. And I just think being that this was their official book, this was the book's official party book signing. These kids, according to, um, According to Martell, 
The kids knew about it. They were looking forward to the book signing and da 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 right? So with all of that coming into play, I think Mel could have put aside a couple of hours and let Martell have it for the sake of the kids. That's my thought. This is their book. They're the authors of the book. So I think he, she could have said, you know what? I'm going to eat this. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a couple of hours. I'm going to bring the kids by so that they can, you know, sign books from people who are purchasing their books. Um, even do that reading that was planned for the book. Uh, and that's all I'm giving you two hours after two hours, I'm out. I'm heading to my peeps. You know, we suffered deaths in the family. We going to be with my peeps two hours for the kids, not necessarily for Martell. Um, but like I said, a lot of people over, um, who are commenting under the the video is they agree with Mel. Why does she always have to be the one to bend and this and that and da 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 da? da. I completely understand it. I'm just I'm just looking at the bigger picture. I'm just looking at someone who always is talking about rising above, but she doesn't rise above. Specifically in this situation, she didn't. And so now when this book signing is publicized, now when this book signing is publicized and the kids find out about it, then what? I don't, I don't know. I know the, the kids are young now. I don't know if they are internet surfing age yet. But eventually they will be. And they will come across this. And then they're going to have some questions. Let me see what y'all are saying. Black Queen says, I love, oh, love. And yes, I'm talking about love and marriage, Huntsville. Black Queen says, I wouldn't have done that, but I can understand why. I, 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 I complete, I ain't saying that I don't understand. I understand why she did it. I completely understand why she did it. I, I just, I, from someone that's always talking about rising above, was that a rising above moment? We're talking about love and hunts, love, love and marriage Huntsville. Hey, everybody coming into the room. Okay, so for those of you who, who don't watch the show, let me let me tell you, let me give you the scenario. So you have this newly divorced couple, Mel and Martel. And it was a bitter divorce. Martel repeatedly cheated on Mel. She got to the point where she wasn't going to take it anymore. She wasn't going to be disrespected anymore. She was done. You know how we women get when we get to that point. We're done. Um, they're divorced. And so now this is life after divorce. Uh, I don't care what Mel tries to present. She's still very hurt and she's still very bitter and she should be. To pretend to be anything else is a facade. Um, Martel is very controlling and is very bitter that Mel finally stood up for herself and said she wasn't going to take it anymore and walk away. So Martel 
does a lot of ish to one, get under male skin, to try to control Mel and what she does with her time and this and that, da da da, da right? And three, Martell does that by way of the kids. So, Martell and the kids wrote a book. It's an actual book, Plane Ride to Canada, I think it's called. Plane Ride to Canada. And their kids are the authors of the book. They are the official authors of the book. I'm guessing as daddy and children, they worked on the book together and he made them the authors of the book. Now, with the divorce came custody arrangements, right? So Mel has her weekends and her time with the kids and Martel has his weekends and his time with the kids, right? And so um, in the past, Martel has done things to weasel time away from Mel when it comes to her time with the kids, right? And she's always tried to appease or rise up or whatever. Well, this time, Martel scheduled an official book signing for the this book that the kids wrote. It was an official book signing. He invited all of these people, right? Um, he and his manager set it up where kids, the kids were going to be reading excerpts from the book. Um, and they were also going to be signing the books, right? So he schedules this book signing on a weekend when Mel has the kids. So this is the conundrum, right? Well, this is the, this is the time that Mel decides that she's going to put her foot down and she's not going to allow uh, Martell to impede on her time. Um, but in, in, as this story is unfolding on the show, to me, she tries to present it. Mel, she tries to present it. She's doing a FaceTime call with her mother and she tries to present it to her mother as if she didn't know what was going on. She tells her mother that she got this email from Martel and the email said, well, am I going to have to get the, the girl's hair done or are you going to do that? And she tells her mother, I don't know what you talk. I don't know what he's, what's he talking about and this and that. Then she goes on to talk about the book signing. So you know what he's talking about. You know he scheduled this book signing. And yes, it's on, it's on, you know, happening during the weekend that you have the kids. So she didn't respond to Martell at all, which is, I, I find fault with. Because at that moment, what she could have done was be the bigger person and respond to Martell and say, you will not have the kids on this weekend. It's my weekend and this is what I'm doing. And that's that. Right? She could have done that. Right? But she didn't do that. She ignored the email. He tried to call her several times. I'm not saying that Martell is right. He tried to call. I'm just telling you the steps that he took. He tried to call her several times. It all went to voicemail. It all went to voicemail because she refused to answer the calls and she didn't respond to the email. So he proceeds on in the hopes that Mel is going to bring the kids to the book signing. Mel's not bringing the kids to the book signing. This is the time where she's putting her foot down. And I'm saying, one, you could have responded to the email and said, no, this is my weekend. They will not be coming to a book signing. We are heading to my mother's because we've lost two people in our family. 
And that I think that would have squashed it right there. He could have been able to reschedule and not have all of these people come to the book signing, looking for the kids, everybody coming up to get the book signed. Martel's the only one there to sign the book and has to, and everybody's asking, where are the kids? <laughs> she could have done that. And, and, and that to me, I mean, yeah, he going to be pissed and he going to be talking all kind of shit, but at least he knows you're not doing this and he can do what he needs to do to reschedule or whatever, right? She doesn't do that. She ignores the call. She doesn't respond on the day of the book signing. He's still trying to call her. She's ignoring the calls to go straight to voicemail. So they never show up to the book signing. Martel's there. And what ends up happening is, remember I said that the kids were going to be reading excerpts from the book. So there's these other kids that um, attended the book signing. And so uh, Martel's manager got the kids to step up and read from the book. And all I'm saying is that I understand where Mel is coming from. But to me, this, this was a special event, right? They're authors of a book. Yeah, he was being an asshole. Martel's always an asshole. Yes, he was being an asshole. But I think she could have rose above, just like she could have rose above to respond to that email. I think she could have rose above and said, this is for the kids. They're authors. I'm going to give you two hours. And then we out. They're not going to be there all, you know, all. I just, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not negating how Mel felt. I'm not negating how, um, what Mel felt she needed to do in that moment. I'm just saying, if I think if she would have put the kids first, instead of her, her bitterness and frustration with Martell, then maybe she would have made a better de decision. Elaine, he didn't schedule on on his weekend. So you so you're telling me that you'll your kids will have to suffer. Your your kids can't stand up. Your kids can't go because he scheduled in on your weekend. A book signing for a book that they authored. So you make the kids suffer. That's what you're telling me, Elaine. That's kind of trashy to me. That's that's kind of trashy. Yes, he could have scheduled it on his weekend. We know why he scheduled it on her weekend. We know he he does things to try to control whatever she's doing or the situation wants to, you know, everything to fall his we know all of that. But in this situation, You wouldn't put the kids first to prove a point. Because remember, they're going to find out about this event. And Martel was saying um, in the episode that, you know, the kids know about the book. They're excited about the book. They knew about the book signing. So, how do you think the kids are going to feel when they learn that the book signing happened and they weren't there? Do you think the kids care about this tug of war that's going on between Martel and Mel? Do you think they care about that? Or are they going to be extremely disappointed that they missed their own book signing? Right, Rachel, at the very least, you you acknowledge that you got an email and you knew what that email was about. You knew what that email was about. When you got that email, you could have just 
put your foot down in that moment and said, no, Martel, they won't be there. I've got plans. It's my weekend. You need to reschedule and leave it at that. But she didn't do that. She ignored the email, which gives him the idea to keep moving forward that she's going to bring the kids. I don't know. Hey, everybody. We're talking about love and marriage. Um, Huntsville, last night's episode was episode three. And, you know, a lot of people don't agree with me and that's okay. Cause, cause like I said, I can, I, I completely understand the side that you are taking, which is male side and why I, I completely understand it. I'm just looking at the kids and I'm looking at some, some, some moves that male made. That were just unnecessary to me. And one of those unnecessary moves was ignoring the situation. She ignored the situation. And that's just not being a bigger person as she likes to present herself to be. Yes, he is a master of foolery. Hey, hey James Taylor. Listen, did you see the... The video that they dropped him and the peasant, I, I don't know that girl's name. I have not committed that girl's name to my memory. Um, The side chick, you know, I call her the side chick or the peasant. Um, She gets no respect from me because, hell, she doesn't even respect herself. So did y'all see the video? The video that uh, they went live, Martel and the peasant. And listen, I'm not calling. I, he called her the peasant. He called his side chick a peasant. And that's the name that I stuck with. Right? Don't get mad with me. He called her that. And clearly she was fine with that. So anyway, on I think it was Friday. She went live. Her and Martel were somewhere together. And she was all over him, kissing him. I don't know where they were because there, the video that I saw, there was no sound to it. There was, there was no sound to it. But she went live and she showed the world that her and Martel were out in public somewhere together. I was like, oh, look at her. She's so excited. That he took her out in public. Right? I think um the clip, the clip, I put the clip in my recap video over on YouTube if you guys want to see the clip. So, <laughs> so I'm like, girl, you you just don't get it. She, you know, she's very condescending and she's very arrogant about this relationship that she has with Martel, right? Um, she wrote some type of crazy caption. Y'all know what the F it is and all of this stuff. And I'm like, girl, you, you're so ignorant in your arrogance that you don't even understand that in this moment, him allowing you to go live, to put the two of you out there, it wasn't for your benefit. It was for the benefit of the show. Yeah, a new episode was getting ready to drop on Saturday night. And so you going live with him and y'all all over each other the way that y'all were, well, you were all over him is excellent, excellent free advertisement for the new, sh the new episode that's coming out. How do you not know this? Peasant, you should know this. You should know this. This should have clicked in your head. He's using this moment as free advertisement for the new episode that's dropping the next night. Hmm. It, baby, let's see. Who is this? 
Wee Wee says he's still dating other people. Now, if she thinks that when he was married to Mel and he's with her on the side, if she thinks that he's not doing the same thing to her, I got some magic beans. I, I want to sell her. I will not call her by her name. Hell, he didn't call her by her name. He called her the peasant. He called her a peasant. I will not call her by her name. Nope. I will not. Yeah, he's still trying to trash Mel. Like I said, I, I completely understand where everybody is coming from with their thoughts. But I just think in that moment for that event, she could have rose to the occasion as she has always done. Or she could have responded and said, no, they won't be there. That's what he could have did. Child, I don't know what I just did. Why he didn't get his side chick, baby? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Proud Black Queen says her name is Peasant. He called her that. That's what he called her. And so it just stuck with me. I, I didn't mean to do that, Bree. You're good. You're good. Jay Mato, Matu. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. The kids are old enough to understand. So you see, the kids are old enough to understand. And Martel said that they were um, looking forward to that book signing. And so when they get the details through the eyes of reality TV, how is Melody going to explain that to the kids? You don't think they're going to be disappointed? Knowing that the book signing happened and they weren't there. <sighs> Y'all a mess. Thank you. He, he didn't. Listen, the side chick. I, I, I hear where you're going. Hey, hey, Nuggets. I hear where you're going. But the side chick's baby's name isn't on the book. How about that? They aren't authors of the book. It's Melody's kids that are authors of the book. Y'all know that the side chick desperately wants to be on this show. She desperately wants to be on this show. And I, I, you have to watch, you have to watch the interview that the peasant did with Tasha K on YouTube. You all know Tasha K on YouTube, right? If you don't know Tasha K, just go over to the YouTube search engine and type in Tasha K. And her channel, Unwind with Tasha K, will pop up. The peasant did an interview with Tasha K. You have to watch that interview. You have to. I don't think the peasant is dealing with the full deck. And this is why Martel was able to move the way that he did with her. But at the same time, She's she's very disrespectful towards Mel. Girl, you were sleeping with that woman's husband. Why are you being disrespectful towards her? Because she's demanding respect from her husband. She's very disrespectful towards Mel. 
She's very arrogant and very condescending when it comes to being part of the reason why as this marriage breaking up. She, to me, she has no regrets. <laughs> does to the mall, I'm going to go with Beyonce. Yeah, she does by any means necessary. The side chick is a sad excuse for a woman. Um, and one of, in, you know, she was, she was in the blogs recently, um, in the blogs or somebody did a video and had some, some behind the scenes information and she was threatening to unalive herself. She felt like unaliving herself. She sure didn't look that way in, in that video where she's all over Martel because Martel is now allowing them to be seen in public. I was like, I, I, when I posted it, I said, I thought y'all told me she was, she was in unalive mode. <laughs> she looked good now. She's happy now that she's getting attention from Martel and it's being put out there publicly. Happy Place says, it seems like he always wants to be in control. He should have expected the unexpected. I agree. I agree. He could have said, if I don't hear back from Mel by such and such date, then, you know, I'm going to have to nix this and, and reschedule. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, they could have done that. He could have done that. But in the end, to me, being that he didn't do that and Mel wasn't the bigger person, Mel's going to look wrong in the eyes of the kids. That's just my opinion. She was in lying mode. What you mean, Wee Wee? What you mean by that? James says this is this whole thing is a mess. It is, and I love it. It is one of the messiest reality TV shows, and I love it. And get this, when it first came out, a lot of my supporters over on YouTube were like, Tabitha, you have to recap and review the show. You have to watch the show. You got to you got to recap it. I was I, I watched a couple episodes and I was like, "No, nah, I don't like this show. I don't I didn't like the show because I didn't like Marceau. And at the very beginning, Marceau was very um into traditional gender roles. Wife needs to be at home, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, right? But his wife didn't want to do that. His wife had done that to a certain point. The kids are sufficient. They, they've gotten more um, independence. And she she wants to go back to work now. She, she wants to, you know, put her stamp on society, right? And he wasn't trying to hear it. And, and he was the reason, Marceau was the reason why for the first time I tried to watch the show, I, could, I couldn't watch. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't do it. They kept asking me to recap and review the show. Tabitha, you're not watching Love and, Love and Marriage Huntsville? No, I can't do it. I tried it again because, you know, I, I like my peeps. If they are asking me to recap and review a show, I'm going to try to recap and review the show if I like the show. Try it for a second time. Nope, couldn't get past Marceau in these traditional roles that he was so stuck on. The third time was a charm. Because a fellow content creator over on YouTube, she did a live and she started talking about all of the history with all of these different characters on the show. And she mentioned Martel calling the girl a peasant. And then she mentioned that the peasant was for a brief moment a part of the show. I was like, wait a minute. So the side chick is also a part of the show. I was like, oh no, no, no. We're going to get us some popcorn. We're going to get us some wine. And we're going to sit here and we're going to try to see what everybody else is seeing in this show. The third time was a charm. And Marceau is one of my favorites now. Couldn't stand him. <laughs> Couldn't 
stand him. Could not stand him. But he's one of my favorites now. Hey, Top Fighter, I see you in the chat. She she wasn't on the show, but there was for a brief moment that there was a there was communication between the peasant and Marceau. She called in and her voice was on the show. So for a brief moment, she was a part of the show. She was never, she never had a full role on the show, like, like everybody else. No. And from what I understand, she keeps asking. She, this is what she's saying. This is why I say you have to go watch that interview that Tasha K did with her. I, I forget her name. I, I've never committed her name to memory. Um, and then when I saw the interview that Tasha K um, did with her, I was like, I don't like her. No, she's on this show as if she had a right to this woman's husband. She's on this show as if uh, she she has a right to be a part of this show. She wants to be a part of the show. She's basically saying they keep using my likeness um, and they won't have a show if um, they aren't talking about me. Baby, it's not really about you. No. All of this mess and drama is, is the fallout between Mel and Martel because of you. It's not about you. Don't get it twisted. Hey, everybody. Don't get it twisted. It's not about you. It's about Martel and Melody's relationship and how it deteriorated because of you. But... Throughout that interview with Tasha K, she believes the show is a success because of her, her likeness. Girl, ain't nobody seen you on the show. What are you talking about? Stop using your likeness. <laughs> what? Baby. I, I, I knew I was like, I, I don't like her. She, she shows no remorse. Uh, she feels she does not owe. Melody, a um, an apology at all. She tries to make Mel look bad during the interview. I ain't with that. No, 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 you, you, no, it's you. You're the problem. You and Martel are the problem. Mel responded accordingly. In my opinion, she gave Martel too many chances. I think so, Latanya. I think so. She's definitely listening to Martel. I agree, James. She do owe Mel a, an apology, but she um she doesn't think she owes Martel an apology. Uh, the B Palace says, but can we say? That a mistress is responsible for deteriorating a marriage. We don't know. I, um, I said she was partly responsible. Not completely responsible. Martel shoulders the other part of that responsibility. Listen. The peasant got... The peasant at some point knew that Martel was married. She continued on anyway. She continued on, on anyway. So, yeah, she shoulders some responsibility. They definitely will. I've heard all of that B-Pallet bought her a BMW. Even in the interview, she brags about all of the things and the lifestyle she was afforded because of Martel. And Martel was able to provide that lifestyle because of Mel. Mel was the driving force behind their successful business. So believe me, I, com I, I completely understand where Mel is coming from and why she did what she did. What I'm saying is that Mel always trying to present herself as if she's the bigger person. She wasn't in that moment, in my opinion. She wasn't. If she was the bigger person, she would have, she would have, re one, responded to Martel 
and said, no, they will not be there. It's my weekend. Or two, take the kids to the book signing. Be the bigger person. I'm going to give you two hours. They'll come, they'll read, they'll sign a couple of books, and then we out. Because in my eyes, when the kids see this, how are they going to feel? They're going to be disappointed. This man make you look bad? No, uh, he makes himself look bad. When I look at what Martel does, he makes himself look bad. And I don't put what Martel does and how Martel looks onto another black man. I don't I won't do that. W grown women don't do that. Gr yeah. He makes himself look bad. Don't take on don't take <laughs> don't take on his dis indiscretions and make them your own. Why would you do that? Um, team T mom says I'm done with Martel. He is a snake. He always trying to dictate our life using the kids. Hi Stephanie. Martel gets on my nerves, but I felt bad for him during the book signing. It, it it's because the kids. I think it. I think it's. I, I I'm not saying that there wasn't um any any um inkling to try to control Mel. I'm not saying that that wasn't it. I'm saying that. In this moment, he was excited about that book, and, and um, they were having a book signing. It, it was it was a goal accomplished for him and his kids, right? So Martel gets on my nerves. Oh, I read that the show started to be about black couples building affordable real estate. <laughs> exactly, uh, that was what the show was supposed to be about. It's it was Mel and Martel, Kimmy and Maurice, and Letitia and Marcel. And it's these um professional black business people in the real estate industry working to kind of like bring up Huntsville, right? Baby, the first episode, it 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 became a whole detour, child. They went on another road. And we ain't seen, we ain't seen nothing about no real estate. We ain't seen nothing about no home building. We ain't learned nothing about no credit repair and no, no, up to how to obtain a loan and none of that. <laughs> we, I would say the first, the first half of the first season, we're in season four now. The first half of the first season. No, I'll give it the whole season. The the whole first season. Maybe maybe a season and a half. Because as long as Mel and Martel were trying to work it out, they were still talking the business of real estate. Right? They were still talking the business of real estate. <laughs> Once it was over between Mel and Martel, Mel no longer wanted to have any type of business with Martel, with Martel. And she also that that little group thing that they had together, that little business that they had together, I forget the name of it. She no longer wanted to be a part of that. And so that's when it it just all went by the wayside and it became the Mel and Martel show. What was going on in their relationship when, when um, they were trying to figure it out with the marriage and then, you know, they were separated and then the divorce. The comeback group. Thank you. The B palette. Yes. She wanted nothing to do with the comeback group at all. She wanted to completely separate herself from it all. 
She is the she is the bit she is the the brains behind she is the brains behind the business. I don't think the business between the two of them works anymore. I don't think they have any type of business dealings anymore. I don't know for sure because they don't talk about it. Hey from the UK. And so Uh, Latanya says, I also think Mel's mom puts thoughts in her head at the time. Um, I felt that when, um, they were doing the FaceTime and she was like, it was, it's, it's just going to be so good to see you, you know, finally, you know, you got the kids, you know, because there was a death in the family and that's what Mel had planned to do. She was going to go be with family that had suffered two deaths. In the beginning, the mom really wasn't all that involved. You know, she would kind of guide Mel, and, but not really um, tell Mel what to do either way, right? But during that FaceTime call, it felt a little different. She was telling Mel what she should do. Martel's mom allows him to disrespect his wife. Martel's a grown man. The only thing his mom can do is, is um, talk to him and, and say, son, that's not right. Now, in saying that, I can't remember her ever saying that to him. <laughs> son... You got a peasant on the side? You know that ain't right. You need to make this right. Or did she? I don't remember. I don't remember. I know she she kind of gushes over Martel. She really does treat... I know where he gets his God gift to women, air about him. She gave it to him. Martel's mama treats him as if he is truly God's gift to her and other black women should feel the same. That's, that's the feeling. She did in season, we're in season four. I haven't, I haven't, what do you mean? We're in season four. Yeah, she has said that. Who is that? That's a live life. She has def. She 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 is of the mindset that men are gonna cheat, and that's that. As if men are gonna cheat, and we just need to accept it. Oh, you mean the season at the beginning of season three? She told Martel that he was wrong. Okay. Okay. Hey, crazy mother runner. These are Southern traditional folks in their world. A man cheats, but it's okay if he takes care. Great point. Great point. But yeah, she, she definitely, I remember her say, oh child, that ain't nothing but a man. That's what she told Mel when Mel went to try to have a conversation with Martel's mother to let her know what was going on. And I'm sure she wanted to en enlist some help from Martel's mother. But she came back with, oh, girl, oh, child, that ain't nothing but a man. I was like, oh, you ain't going to get no, no face smacking from her. Um... T mom says Mel was tired of the mistress disrespect. Absolutely. Like I said, if you have not seen that um, interview between Tasha K and the peasant on her channel on YouTube, you have to check it out. The peasant is something else, honey. She is something else. 
she is something else. Will you talk about Marcel and Tisha's issues? Well, what issues do you want to talk about? I don't like Tisha. I don't like Tisha's mama. <laughs> I think, um, I, I, what issues you want to talk about? What issues you want to talk about? My pastor mom once told me it's better to have a piece of man than no man at all. That's what a lot of um, women of Martel's mama age believe. My mom was like, nah, girl, you could do it by yourself. Miss F Miss Wanda is a buboon, a buffoon. I don't think Marceau is terrible. Dum dum um those tri those gender roles that he was stuck on at the beginning, baby, they worked my nerves. They worked my <laughs> I was like, oh, um, his cheating. Um, now that's the one thing I do like about Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda keeps her foot on Marceau's neck, but at the same time, Miss Wanda gets frustrated and Marceau, and Marceau knows that. And I think he does things and says things to get under her skin. No, I don't think Miss Wanda is comic relief. I don't. I don't. I don't think she's comic relief at all. She's um. Okay, I I don't remember which season, which season, cause I kind of like binge watched the show to get caught up, um, for season four. So I it was like over the course of a couple of weeks, I had binge watched all three seasons. So I don't remember which season it was, but there was a point where Miss Wanda was, to me, emasculating, attempting to emasculate Marceau. She was being disrespectful towards Marceau, and I had a problem with Tisha because she allowed her mama to do that. Kimmy and Maurice are my favorite couple. Those are my thoughts on Kimmy and Maurice. They're my favorite couple. Okay, y'all can think she's hilarious. I mean, that's fine. I don't think she's hilarious. She's 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 a buffoon. When you look up the definition of buffoon, Miss Wanda's face is right there. But do you think because Tisha doesn't know how to speak up for herself that Miss Wanda thinks she's Oh, absolutely. I be, I do believe Miss Wanda is is um protecting her daughter, but Miss Wanda crosses a boundary, in my opinion. Ms. Wanda crosses a boundary with the way she talks to Marceau sometimes. Um, do I think Marceau is cheating? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He came up with that with that cockamamie uh, explanation in last night's episode talking about, uh, what did he say? He said, you know, Tisha, all of my cars... The tag has my name on it. So if my car was parked at, you know, they're talking about this secret apartment that he was supposedly had shared with Martel. So if my cars were, were parked at some um, apartment, somebody would have seen my cars. And I was like, except there's Uber and there's a cab service. And if you really getting down dirty and sneaky, you'll park somewhere else and she'll come pick you up. And y'all would drive to wherever y'all are going. Don't play with me, Marcel. Mm-mm. 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 There's always a way. So he's telling this, this cockamamie nonsense to Tisha. And Tisha's sitting there and, and he looks at Tisha. I just want to make sure that we okay. Are we good? Tisha, are we good? <laughs> okay, Tisha. Uh, they go to ATL to do their bestes. That that's a possibility. Hey, Evan, with the two ends, that's a possibility. But baby, yeah, I think I think Marceau is cheating. I mean, there's just so many rumors flying around. When you have that much conversation happening, uh, it's hard to ignore it. 
Marcel thinks he's so smart that, and, and, and let's not forget, let's not forget, he took a trip to Africa without his wife. He needed to get away. Remember at the beginning, episode one of season four, he had taken a trip to Africa in the off season. He took that trip without his wife and Letitia let him take that trip to a whole other continent. He went to a whole other continent. Now get this. Marceau had never been to Africa. Neither had Tisha. That could have been something that they experienced together. But he needed to get away and be by himself. So he went to a whole other continent without Tisha. And then she mentions, and then that was, you know, it was hard to communicate because, you know, you wouldn't have phone service for days. I was like, what? <laughs> Tisha, you believe that? You believe that, Tisha? If he was in places like Tanzania, um, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, if he was in the more populated areas, that's some bullshit. Now, are there areas where, um, you know, they're, they, they're still native Africans. You know, they, they, they're not living in the city. They're living in the villages. So yeah, you may not have service out there, but you, are you telling me that's where Marceau went? <laughs> Girl, please, please. Any continent in Africa has a way for you to be able to communicate outside of the States, girl. <laughs> yeah, Letitia's not that smart. Letitia's not that smart. There is phone service. See, you know, a lot of people like to view Africa as huts and dirt roads. Like I said, there's still um, villages all across the continent, of course, right? But that's not all that Africa is, baby. And to me, he played up that stereotype. Which, which, <laughs> I was like, this your girl, you believe this? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. He is very patronizing, very condescending, likes to talk down on people. Lights taught that he didn't renew their 15 year wedding vows. Now I, I blame Tisha for that. I, I, I blame Tisha for that when they went to Vegas and, and he told Tisha he did not want to do that in front of everybody. He did not want to do that. Right. And she respected it in the beginning. And then comes along Tiffany. I don't like Tiffany or her husband. She tries to talk. She talks Tisha in to stopping off at this little chapel because Tisha had was going to cross the chapel off their little tour, right? But she talks Tisha into it. Well, you know, you should just go. You should try it. Maybe he'll step up and this and that. Child, Marceau told you. <laughs> Marceau told you. I don't like him. I don't like him. I'm going to tell you why I don't like him. Marceau has a crush on Mel. I don't know. There's something. Because there's some dynamic happening there. Because Letitia I think it was season one. It was season one. Because it was still this gender roles talk between Marceau and Tisha. Tisha wanted to go back to work. She wanted to do networking events and all of this stuff, right? And Mel took Tisha to a huge networking event and introduced Tisha to other women at this networking event so that Tisha can work to get back into the field that she wanted to be in, right? 
And then all of a sudden, Tisha started talking real negative about Mel, in my opinion, basically saying that um, she wasn't facing reality, based, talking about, you know, trying to say her relationship was all this when it wasn't. She was making those along those lines, you know, not specifically that, but along those lines. And then it, it the whole relationship between Tisha and Mel completely deteriorated. They tried to get back, but they never really did. And there is a there is something swirling there that I, I think I think Tisha is insecure when it comes to Mel. What that insecurity is, I don't know. I I I, I don't know if it's professional, the way Mel moves professionally, or if it's something personal. But I do believe that Tisha holds some insecurities, some serious deep insecurities when it comes to Mel. What that is, I don't know. I don't know if it's if her husband is attracted to to me. I don't know. I, I don't know. B Pal B um Palace says they believe that Marceau is attracted to Mel. I don't know. I don't know. We're talking about love and marriage, Huntsville. Um, Tiffany talked Tisha right into an embarrassment. Absolutely. She knows her husband. She, she'll tell you in a minute how long that they've been married. She knows her husband. So when her husband said he did not want to do that, she should have listened to her husband. I felt it was an uncomfortable scene when they were up in that, <laughs> up in that chapel. And wasn't it Tiffany? It ended up being Tiffany and Lewis that ended up renewing vows or something at this little chapel. <laughs> I was like, that's what you get, girl. Your husband told you. Yes, I don't like Tiffany. I don't, from the time she sat down at the table, we was introduced to her and she came to this table to women she's just meeting Women she's just meeting to try to bring up gossip about monster, a child. I was like, oh, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. we don't do this here. No, we don't do this. And it just it threw it. It threw Kimmy a bat and it pissed Maurice off. And Maurice had to set her straight so much. So she started crying. She started crying. Yeah, it's that moment right there where I was like, mm, I don't like Tiffany. And she's been trying to start shit ever since. She She's the type of person that does things. And then she's like, what? Why is there so much backlash? Like at the pajama party. At the pajama party. The ladies are saying... Tiffany was introduced to them as an employee of the Chamber of Commerce. They find out that she is not an employee at the, at the Chamber of Commerce. Right? So Kimmy busted her out because they're always talking about being transparent, but they aren't being transparent with their own person and whatever they got going on. And so Kimmy brought, busted that out at the reunion. And so they talked about it at the pajama party. And so they were talking about it. And then comes Mel and then, no, then comes Stormy and then comes Mel. And Stormy wasn't feeling Tiffany to begin with. But she, you know, wanted to, you know, try to give Tiffany a chance. And, and because maybe she, you know, she'll feel some kind of, you know, differently about Tiffany and all of that stuff. But as they're sit all sitting there at the pajama party having this discussion, Stormy said, uh, what y'all talking about? And so Kimmy, you know, told her we was talking about, you know, what was said at the reunion about, you know, the Chamber of Commerce. And Stormy was like, oh. And she looked at Tiffany. She said, do you still work there? And Tiffany said, no. And then got slick at the goddamn mouth. I don't like Tiffany. 
I don't like Tiffany. She got slick at the damn mouth talking about it's like it's like it's like someone bringing up something from when you were 12 years old. And so it's like everybody paused. And Kimmy says, oh, so you getting smart. And Stormy says, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Nobody came at you like that. Nobody came at you like that. And at that point, Stormy got up and walked off and said, this bitch is crazy. And so last night, in last night's episode, she's telling Lewis about what happened. And she's exaggerating. Completely exaggerated, saying that Stormy was all over her. I was like, what? Stormy said, do you still work there? And then Stormy said, nobody came at you like that. But you had pissed her off by that point. And so she got up and she walked away. You telling your husband that you felt attacked. I don't like Tiffany. I don't like Tiffany at all. Stormy did not attack you. She didn't attack you. You earn some re you you earn some consequences basically. You said some slick shit. Yeah, I already spoke on that, Jeanette. When I'm talking about love and marriage, Huntsville, it's a reality TV show on own. And so the reason why I don't like Lewis is because Lewis buys into her bullshit. Mm -hmm. And Marceau ain't feeling Lewis. Marceau ain't feeling Lewis because um, Lewis got things to say about his marriage to Tisha. And he's like, bruh, I don't know you. Who are you to be talking about my marriage? Tisha, Destiny, Tiffany, and now Stormy. Who, you, you mean, um, what do you mean the B palette? Why are we naming them all? Melody uses these girls to do her dirty work. She certainly put that pajama party together so that they can talk about Tisha. <laughs> Wee Wee says, you don't get upset when you quit a job. You get upset when you get fired. What What is Lewis right about? Lewis cracks me up thinking he going to do something. Child, he had, his, he had his chest all puffed out. I was like, man, please. 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 Oh, uh, what attitude? Who is Jimmy? <laughs> the B palette is going in. What attitude does Marceau have? Marceau walks in a room and he thinks everyone should be impressed. By his intelligence. Oh, I don't get that. I don't I, I do get that he's stubborn. He made no sense to me when when Maurice is asking him for an apology and then in the confessionals he admits to throwing Maurice under the bus but feels that he doesn't owe Maurice an, ap <laughs> an apology. But wait a minute. You admit that you threw your butt brother under the bus, but you don't think you owe him an apology for that. I can agree that Marceau is very stubborn. And, and, but the one thing about Marceau, he is stubborn, but he does have conversation and he will listen. 
and it'll start weighing on him. And then eventually he'll get it. But he's very stubborn. I told y'all he's the reason why in the beginning, um, the first two times I tried to watch this series, he was the reason why I couldn't watch it. <coughs> because he was stuck on those traditional roles. You know, the woman is this, this. She cooks dinner. She takes care of the kids. She cleans the house. And the man goes out and work. Acting like Lewis has, has nothing to offer of value. He does. He's divorced, so he's learned something. Um... I think it's difficult to try to take advice from someone who you don't know and who you feel doesn't know you. You can have all the experience in the world, but if I don't know you and you don't know me, there is nothing that you can tell me. Who is Aiden? Oh, is that the... I agree with that scenario as well. He pissed me off. Both he and Letitia did that shit to that to that kid. Hey, people don't need to know. Mm -mm. Yeah, you need to know me because your experience is your experience. You have to know something about me and what I'm dealing with in order to apply your experience to what I'm going through. So yeah, you need to know me. You need to know me. And if you don't know me, then why are you speaking on my experience or my issue or my situation? If you don't know me, you can't possibly have all of the details. Can't possibly have all of the details if you don't know me. If you don't know me like that. How who talks to Tisha? Marcel? Yeah. If she likes it, I love it. Yeah, I've seen situations where Marcel seems to be emotionally detached. I'm going to be honest in my thoughts on that. I think, um, I think Marcel emotionally shuts down from Tisha because of her overbearing mother. And Tisha does nothing to put her mama in check. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what they've been talking about this season, this photograph. And how this photograph, excuse me, affected Maurice and Kimmy and Tisha, right? Kimmy and Maurice understands how it affects Tisha. Marceau doesn't understand how it affects Tisha. They try to explain it. He still doesn't quite get it. But he sits down in the episode last night and says, I just want to make sure we're good. Are we good? Tisha tells him, oh, we're good. So if she's telling Marceau that she's good, 
that kind of like co-signs his thoughts and he doesn't hear anything else. Tisha has to step up and be honest about her feelings. If it was Melody, he would get it right away. Melody is much more vocal and she's much more communicative and she's clear and she's secure and she does not have a problem expressing how she feels. One time Mel kicked Tisha out of a party and Marceau said, well, that's what you get. I remember she, her ass wasn't supposed to be there at the B Palace. She wasn't invited. She wasn't invited. I remember the party. She wasn't invited. How did she end up going? Why did she go? I forget why she went. I forget why she went, but she went and she, she was specifically not invited. Tisha ass went there anyway. <laughs> and she, I remember, remember, I remember the security, the security came and escorted her ass out. I remember. I mean, Marceau is just, I think Marceau is just very direct. And that's and when he told her that's what you get, I was like, that's right, Tisha. You shouldn't have been there. Why did you go? I forget why she went. Why did she why did she go the B palette? Why did she go? I can't remember why she went. He's not a bully. <laughs> He's very direct. And Tisha is very dense. She's very she's slow at times to me. She wanted to be supportive and apologize. But she wasn't invited. The, the whole, that's it. She wasn't invited. If you were not invited, you don't show up. <laughs> if you weren't invited and you show up, you might get escorted out. And she got escorted out. If she wanted to be supportive and apologize, she, she could have... Um, what was the party for the B palette? I forget. What was the party for? I don't think he's a bully. I think he's very direct. I think he is very direct with Tisha. And the whole thing, and the reason why Mel did not want to invite her to the party, I forget what the party was for. The reason why, because she didn't want it to turn into what exactly it was going to turn into. Tisha went there. She wanted to be supportive. I, I, I could give you that. She wanted to be supportive and all of that jazz. She wanted to apologize. But what did Tisha end up doing? She ended up making a scene. She ended up making it an argument. She ended up making a scene, making it an argument because Mel said, you weren't invited. What are you doing here? I would have went, I would have went ham on it too. You weren't invited. You weren't invited. You weren't invited. Oh, it was for the skincare line. Okay. Thank you. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. But I, I remember the party. I remember the party and her getting kicked out. Because then her and Kimmy go together and Kimmy had to leave too. <laughs> and Kimmy had to leave too because she she was Kimmy's ride. Child, listen. You go somewhere where you're not invited, there is a strong possibility that you will get escorted out. And that's no one's fault but your own. I agree. Mel can be a mean girl. 
And I think Mel can be manipulative as well. I think Mel does things to piss, to purposely piss Martell off. She does little quirks that um she does little things to purposely set him the fuck off. I I I I, I hear you. I hear you. Remember when they were in Vegas and they were they had those little cute cars and they were talking about um he was pissed off about she had released that song and he was he was fuming about it. Right? And then they got into this real heated uh discussion. They had pulled off on the side of the road. They was in those cute cars, you know, doom buggy-ish like cars. And um, I don't know if she was playing the song or if she was singing the song. It shot, it, it just, it got way down deep. She did that shit on purpose and it just set Martell off. I believe she does things purposely to set him off. I do. Because the children, yeah, she's a mean Scorpio. Yeah, she, she'll tell you herself. The Scorpio will come out in her. Where is the, where does the name Coleslaw come from? I keep people keep referring to her as Coleslaw. I call her the peasant. But I don't know where the name Coleslaw came from. But I do know um folks refer to her as Coleslaw. Where did that come from? The B palette. Oh funky not even. <laughs> Why did he call her that? Why did he call her that? <laughs> What's the joke? I told y'all, I wasn't, I, I didn't start the show at the beginning like everyone did. It was, it was maybe a few months ago, just before season four, I binge watched seasons one through three. So a lot of the, um, the things that have happened over over the years and, you know, things that were put out in the blogs and all of that stuff. I missed all of that. But I noticed that people call her coleslaw. And I just, I didn't understand. Oh, because she's a side chick. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. So now it makes sense why everybody calls her coleslaw. She's the peasant to me. She's the peasant. I won't call her by her name. I will not. Somebody, you know, was upset that I was calling her the side chick or, or the peasant. Call her by her name. Nope. Nope. Martell called her the peasant. If you mad, stay mad. Be mad with Martell. That's what he called her. That's what I've committed to memory. She's the side piece. So now it's stuck. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But listen, this was a great conversation. This is my favorite reality TV. It, at this point, it's the only reality TV show that I watch and I do recap and reviews on. I no longer do recap and reviews on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I am so bored out of my mind with them. Um, Kenya is just so vicious and no one really puts Kenya in her place. Um, I don't like that. Uh, I no longer recap and review Real Housewives of Potomac. Um... I just got so bored with uh, the same nonsense from Giselle and Robin. I love the fact that Wendy stepped up last season and was getting Giselle's ass together. Um, but I've tapped out of that show. And I really liked that show. It just weighs on you. The same viciousness over and over and over again. It bugs me. It really does. I think the whole Bravo, the whole Bravo makeup with their reality shows, I'm over it. 
I'm over it. I am waiting for Bell Collective to come back. Um, when Bell Collective comes back, I'll be recapping and reviewing that show. And I'm going to try Love and Marriage DMV. I think that's it. Love and Marriage DMV. I'll check that out when it starts. So if you're not following me over on YouTube, make sure you're following me over on YouTube. You can get to my YouTube channel through the Linktree link in my bio. Make sure you subscribe. I drop a recap and review video um, of Love and Marriage Huntsville every Sunday. <laughs> And it looks like maybe I'll come in and talk live with you guys on TikTok about it. What's what? Which one? Monique show. That's love and marriage DMV, right? Yeah, that'll be on OWN. I don't currently watch any shows on Bravo anymore. Mm -mm. I, the whole... Mm -mm. I'm just not interested in it anymore. So thank you, B Palette. I'll see you here next week. Kenya can't be put in her place. I love her. Kenya is a vicious bitch. That's it. That's that's it. When she called Tanya, I see you next Tuesday. That's crossing the line. That's crossing the line. And then later on during that season, she needed Tanya because Tanya is a mover and a shaker here in Atlanta. Tanya, she viewed Tanya as the happy-go-lucky girl, Portia side chick. No, in real life, Tanya is a mover and a shaker here in Atlanta. Tanya lunches with Oprah and Gail. That's the scale that Tanya and her fiance are on. And Kenya called her to see you next Tuesday and trying to bring that cookie lady to sabotage Tanya's relationship with her fiance. Y'all remember that whole scene? And then later on, what was her husband name? Marks told her she need to fix that shit because he needed Tanya and her fiance at his um, benefit dinner. Y'all remember that? Tanya didn't show up. Tanya didn't show up. Neither did the fiance. I like Tanya. Professionally, Tanya is the only one, Tanya and Monique are the only two that said, F you, Bravo, I don't need this check. I don't need this check. You won't denigrate me. I don't need this check. They ass walked away. Uh, I try, I did try to go live over on YouTube, but YouTube's live, it, it, it just doesn't work for me sometimes. And so I go live. I went live over here today. So I, I will prob probably alternate between the two. So make sure you are um, following me or subscribe to me over on the YouTube channel. Um, But yeah. But still got in bed with Bolo and Portia. Uh, we don't know that. We really don't know that. That's the rumor. That's the rumor, though. That's the rumor. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm going to have me a nice afternoon nap. Wait, I'm going to season up my pork chops. And then I'm going to have me a nice afternoon nap. She said she was in the room. That's what she said. She was, she was in the room. Mm-hmm. She was in the room. All right, y'all. 
That's all I got. I'm exhausted. Great conversation. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.